And now, the triumphant return of Mailbag Monday. Yay. Okay, let us start with this one. It says, plastic patch. Strange. And what it is, in fact, is a bunch of one pin DuPont cable shells. And I think these are the female ones. Um, let's just check and see here. Well, that, if it was crimped, would that go in there? Yeah, I think that will. That's the male. Hmm. Oh, wait, these are ones that I ordered that are wrong. Those aren't the proper female ones. Or are they? I've ordered some female pins that fit properly and some that don't. I'm not quite sure which ones these are. Uh, I've actually got three different kinds here. They all fit kind of different. And they also jam up. Ah. Okay, that was a fight. Um, well then, will that fit down in there? Yeah, that one will. Well, that one. Yeah, okay. Well, it looks like it, uh, it, these can be either male or female. Okay. I wonder how much I paid for them. 200 pieces, 2.54 millimeter, 1P, one pin, pitch, DuPont jumper wire cable housing female pin connector. Okay, so that says they're female, but I think I can use them as males as well. From Alice110, 1983, no surprise there. Um, popular choice. Uh, 99 whole American pennies or buck 28 Canadian free shipping. All right, next up we have business and industrial. Yep, says so on both sides. Must be what it is. One industrial business in a small package. Hmm, I remember these guys. These are well, flat flex connectors. The receptacle side that normally would solder onto a board. So these will solder onto the board for little surface mount pads there and lock in a flat flex connector. The reason I bought these is for the uh, the itty bitty stepper motors that came with a flat flex connector. One moment please. Yes these these, come on, get out of there. Flat flex connectors on these little, well, that's one that I tried to solder. Let's not use that one. Let's use this one. So the pin pitch looks like it's the same. That's good. So I'll pull the little black retainer clip out. Slide that in. And slide back the little retainer clip. And that should, hopefully, be connected. Where's my ohm meter? Let's see if that... I should be able to see some kind of continuity between a pair of those pins, I would hope. After playing around for quite a while with the camera paused, I'm beginning to suspect that these may not be the exact right ones. The pin spacing is correct, but there's, let's zoom in a little bit tighter here, but the width of the outside of the connector, it can slop around a lot in there. If you try really hard, I suspect you can get the pins to match, but 
Well, there's the spacing, and that's the spacing that's inside the connector too. Let me just open this one up a little bit here. Take the locking mechanism off. And there you can see the four pins on the inside. And oh, they don't line up. Oh, crap. Oh, well, maybe I'll find something to use those for. And the search con continues for figuring out what to, uh, how to connect these little stepper motors. Oh, well, hope I didn't pay too much for those. 20 pieces FPC FFC. Probably should have looked up what those mean. Uh, four pin port socket connector terminal, 1.0 millimeter pitch bottom contact. And yeah, that's the guy. Uh, for the 20 of them, I paid $2.41. Eh, not the cheapest thing I've ever bought, but it's not going to break the bank if I can't find a use for them. Uh, Superior by 2014 is the seller what sold them to me. All right, let's take a look at this one that... The post office managed to shred somewhat on the way here. Uh, one power bank case, it says. Oh, that could be fun if it is what it says it is. Oh, that looks promisingly like what it's described as. Yeah, a one cell power bank minus the battery uh, cell um, let me go to my 18650 supplies uh, where are we there lithium batteries of various descriptions let's grab one that's got a pretty good capacity out of here not that one that I butchered uh, 2281 I guess is the winner Okay, so we'll throw that into it. Um, let's take a look at the little board here. Let my magnifier go. So, it's a very basic little circuit on there as these things go. A chip, which, let's see if I can get an angle on it here. Uh, T power TP is at 43.33, I think that says. And an inductor, a couple of wee passives, and not much else. Oh, wait, is there something hiding underneath there? Doesn't look like it, just the back side of the, yeah, just the solder side of the uh, charging connector. So, one charge connector, one discharge connector. Uh, couple, is that LEDs or is that mounting blobs there? No, it looks like LEDs that are probably really hard to see through the cover. They might glow, they might glow through that plastic. Anyway, I'll zoom back out so that I'm actually in frame more than I'm out. That just slides. Ah, okay. It's the positive terminal that does the mechanical holding of everything. Um, yeah, that's marked B minus as it should be, which should be what that side of this cell is. That's usually the little notchy piece on the top there is the positive side. Yes, it is. That one's still charged to 3.8. That's nice. Um, so, drop that in there. Um, okay, do I have anything that I can power off it? Oh, of course I do. In my drawer of USB stuff. Um... Where is my charger doctor? Hang on. Okay, there it is. 
I have to go and liberate it from the other end of the house. So, let's plug that guy in there. Ooh, we have LEDs. Nice. And that says... Five point one two, nice. Let's reset the history on that guy. Okay. No, no. Where he is? There we go. Let's just bug one of these little light things into it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. So fifty-ish milliamps once it stabilizes. I think that's about right for those things. Uh, the torture test. One amp. That's not too bad. It's still within the USB spec. Not, um, I mean, it could be better, it could be more stable, but that's not too horrible for a cheap little thing like this. And. The load claims to be drawing one amp if it was fully at uh, five volts, 850 milliamps. That's not bad. See what happens when I flip it to the two amp mode. I expect the lights to go out. Yes. And it's stuck until I reset it. Okay. That's a reasonable enough thing for what it is slide it into its case. Uh, why is it still got the light on? Okay, so this case is... Uh, yeah, it is metal. It's anodized aluminum. So, and it is in contact with the battery minus all the way along there. So hopefully nothing else comes in contact with the positive. That's not quite perfectly centered. Let's nudge that. There we go. Now that's sitting flush and there. That's a fairly clever looking little thing. Nice stylish uh, blue and silver. It still work. Yes, yes it does. Portable USB power bank case kit 18650 battery charge DIY box 4 iPhone 8X plus S8 S9 Note 8 or you know absolutely anything else that uses USB. Uh, I paid $3.59 from Banggood. Let's see what it has to say about it. It's, uh, specs down here 5 volt 1 amp and it pretty much did that i chose to get the uh the blue one but you can get them in a rainbow of colors all right let's check this next thing it says expansion board module on it a bit about 50 50 with the uh with the honesty this week what kind of an expansion board module do we have here? It's already got its header pins soldered onto it. Let's zoom in. Looks like it's got an SD slot on the top. And it says right on it, DF Player Mini. So I'm guessing, well, I don't have to guess, I'm pretty confident, that it's some kind of a little MP3 player. It's a little bit crusty but not too bad um so is this one of the ones there's a couple of different kinds that i've ordered i'm not sure if this is one of the ones that needs an arduino to talk to it over i squared c or something or if it's one where you just um touch the pins or you know put push buttons on the pins and make it do stuff like that i will have to check the listing i guess TF card U disk mini MP3 player audio voice module Arduino DF play min board M. Bought it from module fans for a dollar ninety seven. Under two bucks for an MP3 player. Wow. It says it's a compact and inexpensive MP3 module. 
can be connected directly to a speaker. Wow. A module with battery power supply, speaker, keypad can be used alone or through serial port control. Oh, neat. With an Arduino or anything using the serial. Hmm. Supports the standard FAT16 and FAT32 that pretty much every MP3 player and every USB device and every um, SD card does. So that's nothing out of the ordinary. Sampling ring rates between 8 kHz and up to 48, including the ever popular 44.1, which is the CD standard. 24 bit DAC. It's actually not shabby for what it is. Uh, can support up to 32 gig cards. Wow. Supports up to 100 folders. Each folder can have 255 tracks in it. And it has adjustable volume and six somethings of adjustable EQ. Slick. But not the pinout. Uh, looks like I have another investigation project ahead of me. It's probably not going to be too hard to find, though. All right. A couple more things here. This one is a circuit board kit. Oh, awesome. I hope it really is a kit. Oh. Let's try this without the blade falling out of my knife. There. It is! It is a kit! Oh, nice! What kind of a kit is it? Ooh, we got a power transistor of some sort and a heat sink, a couple of screw terminals, big honking capacitor. What are you? 1000 microfarads at 50 volts. Wow! Uh, another smaller electrolytic, uh, 470 at 25 volts. Handful of seam resistors, a couple of smaller transistors. Some smaller electrolytics. One, two, three, four rectifier type diodes and one signal type diode. And an adjustment. Okay. So let's uh, look at the circuit board a little bit closer here. So input and four diodes, 4007. So those are like a one amp rectifier diode, thereabouts. Uh, wait a minute. Those are set up as a full bridge rectifier. Ha ha ha. Sorry. I just have to be watching too much electro boom. Um, so rectifier. And is that capacitor connected to them? Yes, it is. So, this thing takes an AC input. Is this a power supply? Possibly. The transistor is a D880. And two 9013. I think those are just a very common generic NPN kind of a transistor that I would replace with a 2222 if I, because I like them and I have a hundred of them. Um, okay. Maybe an adjustment. Yeah. That should be a fun little kit to get to throw together. Anyway, that's my guess. It is a power supply kit. I'm going to see if that's true or not. I guess right. It is a power supply DIY D880 transistor series power supply regulator module board kit. A series regulator. Oh, nice. Uh, $2.77, and as you can see, this came from Banggood. Let's see what it has to say. Input voltage AC, 12 to 17 volts. No direction. Uh, it's AC, of course, it has no direction. Output DC, 8 to 14 volts adjustable. Output current maximum 500 milliamps. Okay. However, that could probably be changed by replacing the big power transistor with something even bigger and more heavy dutier. Uh, contents board, transistor, transistors, 
Um, yada yada yada. All these things, yes. Ooh, not just any potentiometer. A 1K blue and white potentiometer. That's important. Got to get the colors right. And that looks exactly what, uh, like what I got. And a schematic. Nice. Oh, okay. They drew the biggest transistor smaller than the other two. All right. So, what I got here, as I suspected, a bridge rectifier. Um, and yeah, filtering cap. So basically, the uh, there's your positive voltage coming off your rectifier, um, plus whatever volt rail, depending on what your input voltage is. And it gets series regulated through that guy and out to the output. And everything else is just hanging off the bus. Um, there's the adjustment, which goes back to the base of this guy, which adjusts the drive on this guy. Mm-hmm. So I could, as I, as I thought earlier, I could change Q1 out for just a much more massive NPN power transistor on a much more massive heat sink and have myself, you know, whatever current I could get the transistor for, I suppose. That's a slick. And there's the board. Nice layout. I like how this is uh, presented. Thank you, Ben. Good, you've done a good job here. One last package. One sound card, one module, ten pieces, logic level converter, buy. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay, let's start with the one that's here. A USB sound card, essentially. Let's... There. Okay. 3D sound, 5.1. Ooh, virtual 5.1. Uh, real USB plug and play drives two channel speakers directly and supports 3D positional sound and virtual 5.1 soundtrack. How do you do that? Hmm. Um, no need for external power adapter, USB power directly. Digital Class B power amplifier inside. Speaker shifter. Hmm. 5.1 X earphone to speaker virtual theater. Yada, 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 yada. Software value added for music. Many other random terms. Okay. Well, I think. Let's just try this. Oh, we've got lights. And it showed up. Look at that. USB TNT sound device analog stereo. Slick. And does it show up as an input device as well? It does. That's not what my microphone's plugged into right now. Actually, let's try it as a microphone. Okay, so here it is as the microphone, and you're actually listening through it right now. I don't think the levels are quite as good as uh, what they were on the uh, uh, when I was connected directly. And actually, let me go back here for a second. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so I've brought in this little Sony amplified speaker thing. Um, I've had kicking around here for years, um, and I've got it plugged in just to the laptop's direct output right now. I'm going to play a piece of music from the YouTube Don't Sue Me library. You've probably heard this in the background of a few of my videos before. Okay, so I'll stop that, plug this guy in unplug from the laptop 
plug in here. And now then, that's all the volume settings the same, pretty much. I haven't changed anything. That sounds not bad. I mean, it's digital to analog converter, how bad would it sound? It said it was 24 bits. That's pretty cool. There's maybe a little bit more background buzz. I'm not sure whether you can hear that. That's just 60 cycle hum. That could be because this thing's not in a shielded case at all. It could be any number of things. Could be my my cable here anyways. But let's go back to the laptop and uh, just see how much I paid for this little guy. Audio adapter card, 5.1 USB to 3.5 millimeter microphone, headphone, jack, stereo, headset, 3D sound. I'm still not quite sure about this 5.1 with only two speaker outputs. That seems a little uh, dishonest, maybe? I'm not sure. Optimistic? Magic? Anyway, whatever. Uh, $1.28 Canadian, 99 cents American from Access City 2009 with free shipping from Shenzhen, as usual. What does it say? Works for Windows 2000 NXP, and by the way, Linux. This laptop, as some of you have noticed, is running uh, XUbuntu Linux. And I didn't have to put in any drivers, it just worked. Plug and play USB 2.0. Uh, color, send random color. Yes, they did send a random color. Um, dee -dee 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 -dee. What else is there to say about it? Not a lot, except for the, it's pretty much the same as what was on the piece of paper. Alright, so what is this other thing that was in the same package with it? From the same seller ordered at the same time, obviously. Oh, ho. Oh. The package wasn't lying. I think those are actually voltage converters. Why won't you focus? Oh, they are level converted. That's exactly what it is. Um, pair of grounds. High voltage, one, two, three, four. Low voltage, one, two, three, four, and low voltage. And just some resistors, resistors and transistors. You could make those yourself, but I'm guessing these things are cheap enough that there's no point in doing it. The reason you want these, um, if you're running Arduinos and whatnot with a five volt uh, logic on them, like what's back there. Hello, where are you? There it is back there. Um, and you want to run it with any of the 3.3 volt stuff like ESP8266 or some of the uh, um, some of the various modules that you can get that are in 3.3, use this on the data lines so that uh, the 5 volt one doesn't blow up the 3.3 volt one. Also from Access City 2009, of course, because it came in the same package, 10 pieces, four channel, I2C, uh, IIC logic level converter bi direction module 5 volt to 3.3 volt. Just exactly as explained earlier. Yep, that's them. Does it say anything special about them? Oh, it goes on with a whole cute paragraph. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it also works with. Uh, 1.8 volt devices. Okay. Never bothered to mess with any of those, really. Um, yeah. And there we go. Another eclectic selection of stuff on another Mailbag Monday. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I know this isn't the only Mailbag Monday show on the internet. I'm glad you chose mine. Um, I will talk to you again. Thanks for watching.